Hello, Fasadi Catholic Academy. Welcome to week six of distance learning art. Um, I have missed you. I continue to miss you, uh, but I'm excited because we've got some exciting things going on uh, this week. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and begin in a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, before, a little bit different, before I begin my lesson this week, uh, I want to just do a couple announcements. I want to catch you at the beginning. I sent an email out uh, last week to parents. Um, there's an exciting photo contest going on that I want to personally invite you all to take part in. Uh, Bettinger Photography is doing um, this photo contest every Tuesday and Thursday. And I post these in my announcements uh, on my Art Ren web page. So when you open up Art, you'll see announcements. And on Tuesday and Thursday both, uh, they have new um, subject matters for these. And this is for elementary and middle schoolers. It does apply to high schoolers, but that doesn't apply to us at Prasadi. So please take advantage of this. Um, we had one winner last week, a second place winner in our middle school group. Uh, and uh, I will give her a shout out because I'm very proud. It was my daughter. And I can assure you that Katie did not have any help from me. She won in the category of lines. Um, so I'm challenging you. I want to see some winners out there. I want to see Prasadi's name. Uh, if you have any questions or your parents have questions, let me know, but all the rules are on their website. Um, secondly, uh, I am loving seeing everything that I'm getting from you guys. I really love the pictures last week of everybody down working on their own Sistine Chapels, thinking about their families, what makes them special, doing some sketches and drawings with that. So please keep um, turning in what you can to me. I very much appreciate it, and I love seeing it, and I'm so proud of all my artists out there. I'm going to be putting together a bit of a slideshow um, that will go out and showcase um, some really awesome things that have been happening here now in these six weeks. So I wanted to go through that. And then last but not least, we have a drive-through parade happening on Saturday. I'm super excited to get to see you all then. And I really want to encourage you to decorate up your vehicles that you're going to be going through. Um, remember, decorating is another form of art, of our visual arts, of beauty and goodness. So please, please also do that. Um, and I'm, I'm just super excited for that. I'm so happy to get out in the fresh air, see you guys, and do something a little bit normal. So those are my three announcements. And because I started with announcements, I'm going to do my very best today to shorten this lesson a little bit. And I know I can see your eyes rolling in there. That's okay. You can do that. Mr. Heyer is behind my camera right now, and his eyes are also rolling. <laughs> so I'm going to shorten this a little bit. Um, but we are carrying through. We have two more weeks of art history and looking at the Holy Family, including this week. And then, sadly, we have to start wrapping up our school year, so we'll be looking at some final assessments to um, give me the opportunity to make sure that I've taught you uh, what you've needed to learn this year. So that's kind of where we're at. So we only have this week and one more week of our art history in the Holy Family. Um, so that's exactly what we're doing right now, is we're continuing art history. We are gonna learn about the Baroque era. And no, I'm not talking about having no money in my pockets, Baroque. I am talking about a time frame that came after the Renaissance. So that's what we're learning about today. We're going to go over two artists in particular. We're going to do a little bit of a review, and this is also very big in the Baroque era. This, this is an Italian word that means light and dark. And let's see how well I keep saying this. Chiaroscuro. An Italian word, chiaroscuro. So we're going to be going over that and practicing that technique a little bit. And then we're also going to talk about this lovely practice of self-portraits. What is a portrait? What is a self-portrait? And yes, you're going to draw a self-portrait. So that's what we're doing this week. Okay, spinning you around. Okay, our week six Baroque, the ornate age. So let's look at our timeline. We're going to do a super quick review of this. So we start with Byzantine, we had icons. Uh, we went to Gothic, the Middle Ages, we talked about the architecture in particular, we looked at stained glass windows, 
Uh, last week we went through the Renaissance. Renaissance, also an Italian word meaning rebirth. Um, and here we are into the Baroque era or the Baroque age, which happens in uh, the 17th and 18th century, 1600 to 1750. Okay, so here we are in the timeline. Ooh, we're getting closer and closer to the present day. Um, so Baroque. Okay, we're just going to have a couple little vocab words today, talking about these artists a little bit, and then I'm going to get you working. Um, so, uh, just a few words we're going to go over. Baroque. So as I mentioned, uh, this is not saying that I'm broke without any money. Um, it actually comes from a Spanish word uh, that means like an irregular shaped pearl or a pearl. Um, not exactly sure how it got to this era, but we're, we're calling it the ornate age. So I wrote the word ornate because I want to unpack that a little. And you can even kind of see up here how I wrote art. Really ornate means um, extravagant. And the word extravagant to me really kind of means over the top in a lot of cases. Super fancy. A um, lot of curvy lines. We use a lot of gold or um, just things to fancy things up. Um, we tend to really think of that with Baroque, but there's something that in particular I want us to really think about. So we're coming off of the Renaissance, and we had the invention of perspective, and we had uh, chiaroscuro using light and dark, and um, we had things getting more realistic looking as opposed to our Byzantine and our, our kind of stiffer posed um, things where we're getting more lifelike, more action happening. Um, so we're moving from that, as we're coming out of this, the artists now who have been deeply inspired and affected by this new rebirth of the Renaissance, take these techniques and they run with them. So they take them, they learn them, and they go back to their, their countries, and um, they put kind of their own spin on it. So Baroque era, actually, you've got French Baroque, Dutch Baroque, kind of all over Europe. Um, so they kind of spread about. Um, but what I really want us to look at, and, and one artist in particular that we're going to look at, um, uses chiaroscuro virtually in everything that you see that he does. Um, so as a reminder, chiaroscuro, we said, I keep saying it, I keep saying it. And you're going to impress people because you can start saying this great technique. Um, we might get rid of the word value, actually, when we talk about elements and just call it chiaroscuro. Um, it's the use of light and dark. And I'm particularly referencing the Renaissance, because this is when we really saw it happen. And just like you learn from your parents and your teachers, you take uh, what you can learn from the people ahead of you, and then maybe you even improve on it. You put your own spin on it, but we have to learn from those masters. So uh, the Baroque artists learn from the masters who came before them. Oh, lovely, it happens. We do this through all of history, okay? Um, so chiaroscuro, the use of loop using light and dark, and we're going to see this intensely. Uh, when you look at my lesson plans for the week, even with just looking at this, if you choose to print it, you'll see it, you look at it on your screen, you instantly see light and dark in very extreme cases here. Okay, I'm going to go over this way for just a little bit. As always, take notes if you can, uh, especially my first through uh, middle schoolers. Um, so I'll move out of the way a little bit if you want to pause and uh, write down what I have here. This is great. This shows that, hey, I did my art and I love that. Okay, so now we're going to quickly go to the two artists we're going to talk about. Um, Rembrandt, uh, I think, is probably one of the most popular names you hear, other than some of the artists we've already talked about, um, just in art history in general. You know, oh, what do you think you are, Rembrandt? Um, Rembrandt was primarily a painter. And if you look at anything that he did, you immediately see, whether you know the word, whether you know the element of art, you see light and dark. It hits you in the face. Um, so he used chiaroscuro. He took what he learned from the masters who came before him in the Renaissance and literally applied it to everything he did. Now, he is primarily known for doing two things, portraits and landscapes. And today, we're mostly talking about portraits. What is a portrait? You are right, a portrait is a picture of somebody or somebody's people together, okay? So we have a portrait, um, and then he also did landscapes. We talk a lot and we draw a lot of these things, okay, uh, in our art room. Landscapes are pictures of the land, okay? And uh, we can have seascapes, 
We can do cityscapes, mountainscapes. Um, so there's a lot of different outside scapes that can be done. He did landscapes. He also very much applied the technique of chiaroscuro in his piece. And any Rembrandt that you look at, I want to say any, unless maybe you look at some of his sketches, you're going to see chiaroscuro. Um, I said that wrong, chiaroscuro. Um, and I even have in here, because I am not, not, not abandoning our Holy Family theme that we are um, applying to our uh, art history lessons right now. He has a beautiful picture, and I would call it a portrait of the Holy Family. It's the Holy Family with angels and the light and dark, how he plays with this, um, the uh, perspective that he uses in this how what he has Mary doing in this um, picture. Jesus is in a cradle. I want you to really look upon this and think how our going from Byzantine, moving through, um, looking at maybe stained glass, even um, Michelangelo and Leonardo's depictions of just in general s human scenes, whether it's you know the Last Supper or angels everything going on um, I want you to think how it's kind of evolving and now we we have this even more life brought to Rembrandt's depiction of the Holy Family um, so I, I, I want to just kind of note that in there that we I'm, I'm not wanting you to not look at that and you can spend as much time as you want really meditating upon um, not just his style of work but um, how he portrayed the Holy Family um, so that's Rembrandt, primarily a painter. He used oil on canvas. This is what came to be out of the Renaissance, so he's carrying through the techniques that they used that was new. Now we had Bernini, and uh, Bernini, um, if he were in the Renaissance, would have been a Renaissance man. Very likable man and very talented and had his hands, if you will, will literally <laughs> in everything to do with arts. He worked with theater. He painted, he sculpted, he wrote poetry. Um, very talented man. Um, but sculpting is um, what, well, he, I can't say he's most famous for, but um, that's how I kind of look to him. In my art room in the timeline, I have a marble sculpture um, called The Ecstasy of St. Teresa. And what he really took, again, moving from the Renaissance masters, he created a real human exchange of emotion, not just emotion and movement within the souls that he's portraying in the marble, but the exchange of emotion with the viewer. So we have this beautiful um, evolution, if you will, from what the Renaissance has sparked. And so in looking at this, particular sculpture he carved out of marble and he did a lot. He actually created the whole scene of this chapel where um, this sculpture is and he creates paintings and it, it's theatrical in a way but he's really creating this exchange of emotion coming from his subject matter and taking into account how we viewing it see it. So, um, But he also was a painter and like I said if he were in the Renaissance, he would have been a real Renaissance man. I'm going to call him a Renaissance man in the Baroque <laughs> era. Um, very talented, talented individual. Um, so I promise I'm going to keep this shorter. I don't know where I'm at in time. Um, I, okay, I'm going to keep it shorter. I'm at 14 minutes. I'm going to keep it whoop, less than I have been doing. So what I want to talk about are these two individuals, and we've talked about this in the art room a lot. Practice, 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 practice. I can't say that too many times fast. Mm -hmm. Every artist in every era has to practice. And one of the best ways that we practice is drawing. And one of the best things that we can practice drawing is ourselves. Okay? Drawing from life. You're also going to see still life happening in this era, which we haven't talked a lot about right now, but we have in my room. Um, we set up still lifes. We draw from what we see. Okay, um, that's what artists need to do. To get good at this craft, you need to practice, practice, practice. And um, Rembrandt, well known for his portraits, did over a hundred self-portraits. So we know a portrait is a picture of a person, a picture of a painting of a person. Self would be myself. Okay, so a self-portrait. The Both of these artists 
painted themselves. Um, let's think about this. There was no photography at this point in history. So, if you wanted to paint a person and study from a person, you had to pay somebody to sit in front of you very still, photograph like. Um, there's a phrase called starving artists. A lot of cases you did not make a lot of money in that point, so you didn't have the money to pay somebody to sit in front of you while you practiced drawing. The best thing you could do is practice drawing for yourself. Um, so as I mentioned, Rembrandt has over a uh, hundred self-portraits that he did. He practiced on himself. Um, even Bernini has some self-portraits that he did. Both of these, when you look at them, and they're in my lesson plans this week, you immediately see chiaroscuro, light and dark. So they are also very much representing the time in which you're living and what's going on in the world and what's influencing life. Um, so this is what they have in common, portraiture self-portraiture, which leads me to what I'm asking you to do today. And I'm going to be straight up honest with you. This is a little bit uncomfortable. I, of course, while old, have lived in the age of photography. And in my practice, 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 when I have drawn myself uh, or people, I draw from photographs, um, which is a little bit different. And today, unlike last week, I'm not asking you to use a photograph. I want you to honestly sit in front of a mirror and practice drawing yourself. And at this point, I'm gonna be a little vulnerable with you because I've always felt it's important, especially in art, but in all classes, that you know that your teacher can do or does what they're asking you to do. And so today I'm going to show you one, how I want you to work with, set yourself up to draw. Okay, and this is to my littlest, to my oldest, okay? Uh, you are, I'm gonna sit here, and you're probably gonna see a little bit of my messier basement. Um, but you're going to sit. I want you set up with a mirror. Um, oh, you're going to see a whole bunch of mess. Mr. Heyer's getting a lot more than I thought he would, and that's just okay. <laughs> um, so I have a mirror set up, and you can see this isn't like, you know, fancy-wancy. Um, I did dress myself as I might possibly want to be uh, portrayed as an artist. Thus, you know, you know me and my scarves. I wear scarves a lot, but I went a little bit differently today. Um, when you're looking at the self-portraits of Rembrandt and um, Bernini, you'll notice that they do kind of a three-quarter turn. They're not just straight on. In most cases, you're not going to see teeth. You're not going to see smiling. Um, so I want you to kind of put your mind into, I'm going to be an artist right now, and I'm going to practice. I want you to think about the things we've all already learned, how our eyes are in the middle of our head. They're not on the top. They're not on the bottom. Okay, so I want you to think about that, where our ears go. I don't expect anybody to have perfection, because guess what? I don't have perfection. Um, but I want you to play around with sketching. Use pencil eraser, and I want you to also think about chiaroscuro, light and dark. So when you sit and sketch, so you see me here, and I'm going to look at my composition of myself. I want to tilt my head a little bit. I want to see what I look like. And then I'm going to think of shape, line, shape, texture, but shape first. What shape is my head? It's oval, and God makes us all a little bit different, right? So think about the lines. How do things how do things place up next to each other? Um, and the other somewhat unusual thing I'm going to ask you to do is I want you to hold your paper. So see if you can if you don't have a sketchbook, kind of like I have right here, and it doesn't stay together. See if you can put a paper or something behind it. And I want you to literally try to sketch with your paper upright. If you have an easel at home, fantastic. But I want you to practice being an artist. And I want you to sketch. I want you to look into the mirror. Get your position right. I want you to sketch what you see. Um, you may use eraser. Um, I asked my kids to get me a black crayon and I had no idea I had such a huge black crayon. You can use black crayon. If you have charcoal, you may use that. I have decided I wore a red uh, artist scarf today, and I have red lipstick on. Um, ooh, that's not my red, that's my red pencil, but this is my colored pencil. And so I just kind of, I'm gonna expose myself here. I drew a little self-portrait of myself. That's all I'm gonna show, because it's not exactly me. Um, but it's a good practice, and that's the most important thing, is I want you to just do a little practicing today self-portraiture, you need a mirror, I want you to try to hold up your paper, because it's just different at this angle. If you've got an easel, you can prop it up great, or if you can just hold it. Uh, not looking for perfection. 
um, just practice, practice, practice. Um, if you, after you do yourself, if you want to have somebody in your family pose for you, you could also do that. Um, hopefully they don't charge you too much money. <laughs> anyway, uh, as always, I miss you guys. Um, I cannot wait to see you on Saturday. Please keep in mind that contest and then look for some of the artwork that I'm going to send out and kind of showcase from this time together. I can't wait till next week. Uh, see you Saturday and you're in my prayers. Pray for me. Love you guys.